Good afternoon. Welcome. Thank you all for coming out this afternoon. I know it's kind of tough right after lunch, right? I got to go sit down and try and stay awake for some bozo on the stage. I get it. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try to keep you engaged, try to uh, keep you awake. Uh, I don't know how many people uh, I'm going to try to see, although the lights are pretty bright, but how many people uh, listened to my talk from last year? Anybody? Ah, a few of you. Okay, good. Good. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a review. So for those of you that weren't here last year, that's okay. We'll get you uh, up to speed. Um, before we do that, though, a little bit about myself. L let me tell you about this slide. I got to be honest with you, folks. Nobody loves this about us, about me slide more than the person who made this slide. Okay, let, let's be honest here. So I'm going to do something a little bit different instead of just reading this slide to you. Okay, I'm going to do something a little bit different, and uh, it's going to be a bit of a surprise for some of the people, So, because uh, they don't know this is coming. I'm going to call some names out, and I want those names to come up here in front of the stage, okay? And there's a reason. You'll see once I get them up here. Heather Mahalik, I want you up here. Phil Hagen, I'd like you up here, please. Ken Hartman, Kevin Pagano, don't look away. Don't look away. Uh, Jared Barnhart, Andrew Rathbun, Tony Knudsen. Who else? I'm, I, I'm going to miss people here. I'm going to miss people here. If I miss anybody that deserves to be up here, you know who you are, and I apologize. Uh, these are the ones that I am pretty sure are in the room. Anyway, these folks here, please, please, don't, right here, right here. The reason I bring these people up here, folks, these are all names you hear all the time. If you spend any time in the forensics community, rather than wasting time talking about myself, I want to introduce you to the people who are the people in this industry. And if these people are talking, you need to be listening. They work tirelessly in their own areas of expertise to keep forensics going. The work that they do, I can't say enough. And if you're just beginning and you don't even know where to start, man, Google Andrew Rathbun. It doesn't get any better than that. And I want you to look at them, put a face to the name, and I want you to know this. I get that in this industry, Many of us are very introverted. Even when you see any of these people on a stage, don't think that they're up here and it's all natural. We're nervous. I could pee right now. I'm just saying. It's like that for... <laughs> it's like that for all of us. But these are the people I want you to see. They're just normal people. And I don't ever want you to be intimidated or nervous to come up and talk to any of them shake their hand, introduce yourself. We want to meet you. Don't ever be afraid to come up and talk to us. Thank you very much. I'm sorry to put you guys on the spot like this. Every last one of you deserves it. Okay. Now, uh, I was going to do something else, but the, the room's a little thin to be doing it, so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to tell you what to do on the break, though, and hope that some of you do it. I want you to take one step out of your comfort zone. On the next break, I want you to find somebody that you don't know. And I want you to go up and introduce yourself to them. That's what I'd like you to do. That's how we get to know each other. And I know it's not a comfortable thing for a lot of us to do. Folks, I walk through the back of the room trying not to make eye contact with people because I'm nervous. Which one of the people in this room is going to figure out that I'm a fraud. It's going to figure out that I'm nothing but a poser. I stand up here and I see my name get used with the folks in front of me. I can't believe it. I'm like, one day, one day, it's going to all come crashing down. Somebody's going to notice. But I'll tell you what, until then, I'm going to ride this wave for every bit I can get. All right. So anyway, about me, I teach a few classes. I wrote one of them. If you want to know anything more, my CV's uh, on my website. 
it's written because in a certain way because I do uh, criminal work, defense work, I testify in court. So my CV has to be written a certain way in Canada. And because of that, it's very, very long. So if you need to sleep and you can't get to sleep, download my CV. It's a surefire way to get rid of insomnia. Everything I'm going to talk about today is current as of right now. Anything with forensics always needs to come with a disclaimer. If it doesn't and you find yourself in the uncomfortable position of having to answer to what you said in court one day, let me let you know how that will play out. A lawyer will ask you a question and you're going to answer the question and they're going to say, really? Because two years ago in your deposition, you stated something quite different. Were you lying then or are you lying now? That is never a question you want to be asked on the stand. Avoid it. So it's good for now. In five minutes, it could all be different or somebody could come and prove me wrong. I've done a lot of research, but I'll tell you what, anybody who's done any research into anything goes down the rabbit hole and you know what I'm talking about. It is a life sucking venture. And the worst part is you never know if you missed something. So anyway, this is where we are so far. Last year, I was up here talking about something that got discovered quite by accident. And um, it was what it is that we believe USB devices to be when we're doing forensics. And I had showed this slide and I said, yeah, we're all familiar with the USB store drive. Anybody that's done forensics for any period of time, if somebody asks you, I need to know what USB devices were connected, or I need to, you know, the case concerns data exfiltration, employees stole something, whatever the case may be. Where do we go? Well, we go to the USB store key in the system hive of the registry, and that shows us the connected devices. And we've always been told that just expand on the name. Uh, in the case of the second one, SanDisk Extreme, just click on that. And the stuff that shows up underneath it, that's going to be the serial number of the device. And we were told that if it has an ampersand in the second character space, that means it doesn't have a serial number. So Windows is assigning it some arbitrary value. That's about, well, that's about the closest to a half-truth that we have today. To expand upon that, any value that you see there, the majority of the time is nothing more than some kind of a Windows assigned ID. It is not a serial number. Why does this matter? Well, it matters a lot because we've got to get it right. What you do matters. And especially on the criminal side, you have the power to put people in jail or not. On the civil side, you have the power to get someone fired or not. I don't know of any more powerful position in the computer space than that kind of power. You've got to get it right. Do we make mistakes? Absolutely. I wasn't born knowing this. I was putting in forensic reports for years that this was the serial number. We're going to find out how bad that can get in just a second. Anyway, these are two devices that were connected to the machine and to things that we called serial numbers. Now, with those same two devices connected, you open up PowerShell, you run a little script like that, and what does it say? Well, it says something different. That listed serial number. Does that look like either of those serial numbers? Nope. One of them's close. But if you look all the way over to the far right, that device ID, that looks a little closer to what is in that list that we've been calling serial numbers. Now, you might say, Kevin, you're just being a little pedantic over here. I mean, the number's there. Yeah, in this case, well, it hasn't gotten bad yet. But words matter, and what you say matters. 
And while you and me may understand the nuance, a jury, a judge, your managers, your bosses, they don't understand that nuance. All they see is that you got it wrong. Remember, at this point, right up to right now, we have those two devices. So we have the luxury of being able to plug them in and see how they identify. It wasn't too long ago that we were only looking at the USB store key. And again, if you are looking at a computer, if you're analyzing a computer that you haven't, that you don't have the USB devices from, all you've got to go off of is this artifact. And if all you were looking at was the USB store, you would never know whether or not fixed disk storage devices or external hard drives had ever been connected. And so if you never expanded the SCSI key, you would never have known that these devices had been connected. And by the way, there's ampersands in both of those serial numbers. And one of them belongs to this Seagate hard drive. Does anybody want to challenge me that this Seagate hard drive doesn't have a serial number and that's why the ampersand is there? I can assure you there's a serial number. It's circled right on the hard drive. But that's not what we see. Keep an eye on the top right corner. I put the serial number of that drive up there because I'm going to use that drive in a few examples. So the and, and I'm going fairly quickly over this only because this was from last year. Okay. As Phil and Heather had said, that video is online somewhere. It's on the SANS site. You can go watch it. In my testing, I took that very same drive and I plugged it into a toaster. Now the toaster's connected USB 3. And we'll look at the serial number that came up. DB123456789. Yeah, I don't think that's what are the odds? I should go buy a lottery ticket, huh? So that wasn't right. Then I took a SATA to USB adapter. Well, to be fair, I took three of them and I plugged them individually into that very same drive. You can see that serial number still on the top right. Every single adapter gave me a different result. I want you to think about that for a second. How can you trust what you're seeing? I took an external hard drive, a Seagate, and you see the serial number there. And I plugged it in and oddly enough, that script that I ran, the PowerShell script, did actually pull that serial number out. But what serial number did it pull out? There's the hard drive, there's the serial number. But let's look at what's circled. NA84FYGR, where was that? That was on the plastic case. Are you tracing a plastic case or are you tracing a hard drive? Because I can tell you that when it comes to external hard drive enclosures, they're specifically built to be able to interchange hard drives in and out of the enclosure. So somebody has is using a USB enclosure and they have different hard drives that they stick in at different times, what are you gonna see? I'm gonna be showing you shortly, you're going to see exactly one hard drive. And you're gonna think only one existed. But that hard drive, the serial number on it and the serial number on the plastic case, well, neither of them match what the registry says, according to everything we've ever been taught, there's no serial number. This must be some crappy knockoff device that has not been authorized by Microsoft. That's what we've been told. Folks, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I am not dogging anybody that came up with those original assessments. We were working with the knowledge that we had at the time. We were doing the best that we could do with what we had to work with. 
in all of the testing that we did seemed to support this back in the day. We, I say it like I was doing it. I wasn't doing it. People far smarter than me were doing this way back in the day. And I learned from them as many of you did. So that brings us to the question of why is this? How can this happen? And anybody that was here last year got a very candid answer from me. As a matter of fact, at the end of my talk, somebody put their hand up and they said, Kevin, you, you've shown us all this stuff and you told us we can't trust this, but you haven't told us why. Hmm, you're right, I haven't. Um, well, the answer is I don't know why. I can't tell you why because my research hasn't gotten that far yet. All I know is what we thought is not correct. Well, very shortly after that question was asked, um, and quite frankly, the presentation was put online along with a paper that I wrote on the subject, I get a call from a lawyer, a lawyer in Texas, uh, just down the road actually. And they had a case where a lady had left the employment of one company, went to another company. And when she turned her laptop in, uh, they did forensics on it. They wanted to see if she had stolen anything. And in their examination, they found out or alleged that she had more than one external hard drive. So we see here that that's a, a direct excerpt from the report of the other expert. And the other expert said, these are the devices that were connected. There's a, uh, a USB stick, SanDisk cruiser, and a couple of Seagate hard drives that were plugged in. There's the serial numbers, dates, and times that they were interacted with. And the picture on the screen is of that actual drive that she had turned in. And you can see the serial numbers like, I don't know, NA4W, whatever it is. Now, the problem was she swore up and down. She only ever had the one Seagate hard drive. There was no other hard drive. And when they bring this to her, she has no idea why. She said, I don't know. I just know I've only ever had one. And she's got to explain this. She hires lawyers. She's telling them, listen, I've only got one. So this lawyer is trying to Google around and try to figure out what's going on. And one of the hard, one of the serial numbers, the middle one, that 2HC, as he's Googling stuff, he finds all of these different websites that talk about this drive with this serial number. Now, the first thing that I notice when I look at this list are things like hard drive guru and data medics. These are data recovery websites. And they're all talking about a drive with that serial number. And in pretty much all of those cases, it's someone on a forum typing a message saying, uh, this is what I saw, my hard drive's acting up, it's not working properly. And then someone on the site says, run some diagnostics on it, tell us what it says. And when they send that screenshot in or that information, invariably on these sites, it's carrying that serial number. Okay, something's up. Well, this guy, calls me, I get engaged, uh, I'm reading the report, I'm looking at what's going on. And I told, and the reason he called was because of the paper he read that I wrote. And he said, and I told him, I said, this, this second drive, I said, it very much could be the first drive. I can't explain how or why yet, but I can show you how these mistakes can get made. Very, very shortly after I was engaged, the phone rings again. And it's Sands. And they said, Kevin, can you teach a Forensics 500 class in Istanbul? And I said, I'm your guy. I'm your guy. I know my wife wishes I wouldn't say that so often. I say it to Sands all the time. They're like my second wife. So I hop on a plane. I fly to Istanbul. And during the class, there's a section on USB forensics and how to do it. And so as anybody who's taken a Sands class before, knows the instructors always go beyond the courseware. I mean, that's why a lot of people take SANS classes because they're getting so much value add by the instructors in the class. 
And so I'm doing demos on this and I'm talking them through what I've been seeing. And I take a drive apart and I plug some different stuff in and I show them how the number changes or doesn't change. And there's a student who thinks, I don't know, I guess that maybe I'm just doing a very controlled environment test. And that's why I'm coming up with the answers that support what I'm trying to say. So he says, I've got an external drive right here. Could we plug mine in and see what it says? I said, sure. That's what we did. And then I took his hard drive out of the enclosure and I plugged it into my hard drive enclosure. Anybody want to guess what the serial number was that popped up? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, exactly. The 2HC serial number. I'm like, okay, I don't know what just happened, but I want to buy that hard drive from you right now. I tell you what, I will trade you a Samsung T7 two terabyte solid state for that drive right now. Who would turn down a deal like that? Bing, bang, boom. I've got his hard drive. I don't know how this is going to play out, but I know that this is important. So I get back to my lab and I start doing a bunch of testing. I took a Seagate external drive and you can see the serial number there. You can also see what PowerShell told me about it. It had the serial number of the plastic case. That's all. I took it out of the plastic case. Clearly the hard drive has a different serial number than the plastic case. Let's not let the facts get in the way of a good story. Are you tracking a plastic case or a hard drive? Now, when you take these drives apart, at least in the case of the Seagate, many of them are like this, you see that tin foil at the top of the drive. When you peel back that tin foil underneath it is that kind of little card circuit board kind of chummy thing. And that's where the USB plugs in. All right. So I take that USB, that that just that controller card, that adapter, and I plug it into an, a Hitachi hard drive, not even a Seagate, a Hitachi. Anybody want to guess the serial number that pops up for me? You can see at the top, 2HC. There it is again. So then I plug in an HGST hard drive, another brand of hard drive into that adapter. 2HC, there it is again. I take a solid state Western digital. It couldn't get more different. Plug it into that controller. 2HC, you can see it there. And I just kept doing this. And I was taking, doing different testing. Now, the weird thing was that if I took a Seagate drive from a different external drive and plugged it into that controller, it was able to talk to the firmware of the Seagate drive to report the serial number of that Seagate drive? No, of the serial number of the plastic case of that other Seagate drive. How does this thing know the serial number of the plastic case? because it's burned into the firmware on the drive. That's how. I did a bunch of different things. I even went so far as to try different USB cables just to see if the cable had anything to do with it. And my testing determined that it didn't. Uh, everything still remained the same as the testing I had done before. So what did we learn from this? How did this happen? Why does this happen? Well, first of all, the serial number. So when you plug that USB device into Windows, as it turns out, Windows is going to wait a certain amount of time to get that serial number or to get whatever is reported to it. And then it's going to assign a device ID, right? I'll come back to that in a second. If it does not see that serial number reported to it in a certain amount of time, it will, it will grab a serial number from somewhere else. The next logical place for it to get that is from that controller card. Well, the controller card had that 2HC serial number. And all of the controller cards in all of those Seagate external drives carry that serial number. 
Folks, what do we know about a serial number? Where I come from, a serial number is a unique number. So now we can't even call that a serial number because there's nothing unique about it. It's kind of like GUIDs, right? We use GUIDs in forensics all the time. Globally unique identifier. It's not global, nor is it unique. But let's not let the facts get in the way of a good story because I've worked a lot of criminal cases where they were going to hang somebody because a GUID matched. Because a GUID matched to a pirated key. I wouldn't want to bring up LimeWire or anything because I'd be dating myself, right? Most of the young folks are like, Lime what? Isn't that something you ride outside? Anyway, I digress. So that adapter carries that number. And if Windows cannot grab the serial number from the drive fast enough, it'll grab it off that adapter. And it doesn't care what the adapter is connected to. And when you connect other drives that are not Seagates to that adapter, the adapter can't read the firmware properly, which means that it's not reporting anything to Windows. So Windows grabs the serial number from the adapter card. And if you do not have the devices at the time of seizure and all you have is the registry, you are going to believe for all the world that there were two Seagates ever plugged into this machine and there were not. We were lucky in that case because we had the offending hard drive. After we dismantled it, I have the luxury of having a class 100 clean room in my lab. We do data recovery as well. So I was able to run some tests on that hard drive and find out that the hard drive was in a failing state. And that was why it every once in a while would default to that HC, whatever it was, 2HC serial number because every once in a while the drive wouldn't come ready fast enough for windows so windows would grab that identifier from the adapter card folks we got to know what's going on we've got to test i mean it was a rabbit hole no question how do we know to go down that rabbit hole we don't I can tell you that so much of the research work that a lot of people do in forensics, they're not doing it because they woke up one morning and said, well, I think I'm gonna research this. They're doing it because they pulled a thread in a case or something and that thread took them down the rabbit hole. Now that is kind of hard to consider for a lot of us. We think, well, no, it's a computer, it's structured, it's binary, it's zeros, it's ones. Oh, when I teach cyber threat intelligence, I have so much fun with that class because it takes everybody in the class who's used to that very matter of fact, yes or no, on or off idea. And I start throwing bias and fallacies and thought exercises at them. And I'm telling you by day three, it is. Because as much as they want the answer to the question, my answer is it depends. What do you think? What you think matters? And they're like, no, it's not supposed to matter. The computer knows the answer. How does it know the answer? Folks, I'm here to let you in on a little inconvenient truth. All of the stuff that we use in an operating system in our forensic investigations was not put there for your forensicating pleasure. It was put there by Microsoft to enhance the user experience. It's just that smart, smart people like Chad Tilbury and Heather Mahalik and all the people you had up here, all of these people, they figured out how to leverage that user experience and take that information and parse it out in a way that's useful to us forensically. And so anybody who's ever railed against shell bags and my gosh, how are we supposed to understand shell bags? That is the dumbest thing. It makes no sense. Why would Microsoft do it that way? Because they didn't do it for your forensicating pleasure. And the computer knows exactly what to do with it. Computer knows. Shell bags, my goodness. Shell bags is one of my top three forensic artifacts. Yes, I have a top three. Shell bags. The only thing better than shell bags Prefetch. And the only thing that trumps prefetch, the registry. Oh. 
I'm telling you, Friday night, a fireplace, bottle of wine, and some Frank Sinatra, and a Windows registry. Doesn't get much better than that. My life is complete. Of course, my lovely wife is with me, honey. Anyway. Understand that whenever you're doing forensics and you're trying to determine something, I'm seeing what Windows wants to enhance the user experience with, not something I can use for an investigation. Make sure you temper your decisions with that. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't trust your tools implicitly. Your tools are a means to an end. Get out from behind that Nintendo console where you push your buttons and hope for the right answers. You need to know how data lives and you need to know how to get the answer yourself. Don't start using a tool for anything more than scale. Now that I know how to do it, I can use a tool to do it faster. It's like ChatGPT. Stop asking ChatGPT questions. ChatGPT is great if you already know the answer. It can get you there faster. But if you don't know the answer, oh, are you going to be embarrassed? Because ChatGPT lies. I went to ChatGPT once in a fit of vanity. And I said, what does Kevin Ripa do for SANS? And he says, Kevin Ripa is a well-known instructor for SANS. Uh, most commonly known for his instruction of Forensics 508. Folks, I've never taught 508. I barely passed a certification attempt on that monster. But hey, ChatGPT knows better than I do, apparently. I'm going to leave you with this. What you do matters. Maybe it doesn't matter to you so much on a Friday afternoon at 4.55, but rest assured, it matters to whoever owns that computer you're investigating because their life, their livelihood, even possibly their freedom hinges on the decisions you make. Thank you very much.